We turn now to Spain, one of the epicenters of the pandemic in Europe, with over 47,000 confirmed cases and nearly 3,500 deaths, the second highest number in the world after Italy. The number of new infections in Spain has multiplied at a rate of 20 percent in the last 24 hours. Health workers account for nearly 14 percent of Spain's infections. Many face limited availability of protective equipment. So many people have died that Madrid's municipal funeral home has stopped collecting bodies. A large ice skating rink is now being used as a makeshift morgue. Not far from the rink, the venue for last year's U.N. climate summit, the EFEMA, has been converted into a hospital ward with thousands of beds. Spain's government has opened an investigation after soldiers found unattended bodies in some of the nursing homes the military has been disinfecting. As Spain faces its second week of lockdown, the government plans to extend the state of emergency by another 15 days in order to stop the spread of the coronavirus. For more, we go to Madrid for an update from Maria Carrión, former Democracy Now! producer, journalist in Spain, head of Fi Sahara, a film festival that airs in the Sahrawi refugee camps of Algeria. Uh, it's great to have you back, Maria. You've been now on lockdown uh, for two weeks with your family in the heart of Madrid, which is the epicenter of the epicenter, uh, Spain, uh, as it's fast surpassing Italy in its rate of infection. Talk about what's happening now and what the um, president is about to announce. Well, as you mentioned, this is uh, ground zero in Spain um, uh, for a number of deaths and, and infections. We have over 1,500 deaths in Madrid. Uh, so if Madrid was a country, it would actually be fifth uh, in terms of death rate in the entire world uh, between uh, Iran and France. Um, uh, so we have, this is day 12 of the lockdown. Um, everybody seems to be following it with very few exceptions. Uh, hospitals are beginning to be overrun with um, cases of coronavirus. The ICU units are um, at capacity. And um, we have a scarcity of every kind of material that you can possibly imagine. Um, so this is a repeat of what happened both in China and in Italy. Um, Catalonia, uh, the region of Catalonia, is also uh, hard hit. It is now now has the highest infection rate, new infection rate, um, in the country. And as you mentioned, 14 percent of uh, healthcare workers, at least, have been infected, which has taken out over 5,000 uh, people from um, giving care. Uh, they do not have the protective gear, as I was hearing Sean and Kelly speak. Uh, the same thing is happening here as well. People are having to either recycle um, their gear or uh, simply just make their own with whatever is lying around at home. Um, so today, Parliament is an empty, almost empty Parliament will be convening. Um, so via via um, uh, online um, telematic uh, vote, they will be debating the extension of the state of exception. Uh, uh, the president of Spain, Pedro Sánchez, will be speaking um, and explaining why this needs to be extended. And we're expecting, of course, um, uh, for uh, everybody to vote um, for this measure and keep everyone at home, except for certain workers. That and can both still he leave their home. and the vice president, Pablo Iglesias of Podemos, both of their partners um, are COVID-19 positive? Their partners are COVID-19 positive, and they have gone in and out of isolation. They have broken their quarantine a few times to attend meetings, but now meetings are all um, at a distance. Uh, there are a lot of politicians infected. We talked about this a few days ago, and of course, the list is just increasing of, of politicians in Spain um, who are either in quarantine because they've been very close to uh, virus um, infections or actually have tested positive and either at home or in hospital. Uh, Garzón, we still don't know. Baltasar Garzón, the, the very renowned uh, judge, we still don't know if he is positive, but it is a suspected case because he has all the symptoms and um, uh, was hospitalized for respiratory distress. Um, the most vulnerable people here, Amy, are the ones that are really of concern. You mentioned the nursing homes where um, these bodies were found. Um, in the news yesterday, there were um, interviewing health workers, uh, care, caregivers in these um, and other 
um, uh, nursing homes, and the director of one of the, these homes, um, the Maravilla Center in Madrid, was running a fever, um, sick, but still at work and crying because she said that she didn't have backups. Um, she suspected all of her staff was infected, but they could not stop working and caring for the elderly patients, most of which they feared were also infected and some of which had already died. Um, so this, uh, you know, uh, hearing Sean and Kelly um, talk about how these are pre-existing problems here too, nursing homes have been a problem for a long time, understaffed, underfunded. These are publicly financed, but private, privately run facilities where oversight is not very good. And so we're seeing a result of this. Our elders are dying. Uh, Maria, I wanted to ask you about other vulnerable populations, uh, the those uh, in the prisons of Spain, as well as the uh, migrants. There's a huge uh, migrant population, especially from uh, uh, northern Africa uh, uh, in Spain. Uh, what's the situation with migrants who are perhaps in detention or, or in precarious living situations? Uh, some centers um, are letting some people go, um, but it's still a pending issue. Uh, there's not enough being done, both in these migrant centers where people are um, being held and also in uh, prisons, jails and prisons in Spain. This is something that um, has not yet been dealt with. Uh, and, and I wanted to ask you, the New York Times had a very uh, uh, an amazing article today talking about uh, medical doctors in the United States apparently hoarding potential uh, treatments, uh, uh, the, especially these drugs, chloroquine and hydrochloroquine that President Trump uh, has, uh, has been touting, that these doctors have been prescribing them all around the country for themselves and their family members, in, a sen in essence, hoarding them. And now pharmacists are complaining that actually doctors are involved in this. Uh, do you have any, situ uh, any examples of health professionals there sort of looking out for themselves rather than their patients? Very few, um, actually. I don't think people are paying much attention to Trump from here. So um, those drugs have not been hoarded that I know of. Uh, at the very beginning of the crisis, we did hear about certain doctors hoarding face masks and taking them out. There was one doctor who took all of the face masks in the hospital and took them to his village and gave them to his neighbors. But that's not generally the case, or at least it's not being reported on. And, Maria, if you could talk about the FEMA, we were just with you, working at the convention center, which has now been turned into a massive hospital, ironically, the place where the U.N. Climate Summit was. And we've been dealing with this issue of the connection of climate crisis to uh, these viruses that we're seeing increasingly. And also the skating rink, which is very personal for you, being used as a morgue. Yes, indeed. Um, IFEMA was convert converted into what is now Spain's largest hospital. It has over a thousand beds, including also um, intensive care units. And uh, it doesn't just um, bring in patients, coronavirus patients, who for the most part are not the, the, the most serious of cases. It also has opened a section for um, the unhoused. So there's about 150 beds for people who um, do not have shelter or are being kicked out of shelters when um, in the morning and they need a place to be in health care. So IFEMA has transformed itself and, and is now just full of beds and hundreds of people sleep in one same um, wing. Um, that's one thing. The, the ice rink is actually a big mall. Um, it's located close to IFEM, as you say, but not only that, very close to my daughter's school. Uh, it is a place where they've gone ice skating, where they regularly meet with their friends and have lunch. Um, there's movie theaters. They've celebrated birthdays. And uh, we all of a sudden saw all these hearses enter this place. And um, so my older daughter, Gabriela, said, I don't think I could go there again with my friends. Mm. Maria, we're going to be touching back with you. Uh, Maria Carrion, former Democracy Now! producer, living in Madrid, Spain, where she's a freelance journalist. Um, she has been holed up with her two daughters and her partner uh, for the last two weeks. Maria runs three kilometers a day 
in her apartment, and it's not large. Um, that doesn't even compare to the man in France who just ran a marathon on his balcony. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Puerto Rico to speak the with the mayor of San Juan, Carmen Yulín Cruz. Stay with us.